Hey, what's up, Jojo in the morning family? I hope everybody is having a super, super good day. Hey, I want to talk to you about something that I know is going to help you greatly. But first, I just want to say thank you to all of our partners. Without you, we could not do what we do. Thank you so much for, for partnering with us in prayer and financially. Now, what I want to talk to you about is something. I did a video for the people in our mentoring on this and then also for all of our health coaches. And when I was talking about this subject, it I just wanted to share it with, with everybody. It is on the subject of focus. Okay? What do you focus on? You know with at uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, you after everybody's kind of already eaten, you got that one cousin. What you staring at? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm staring at those desserts. They're going to end up being by the desserts. Now, somebody's brewing coffee, your boy's going to be like, that coffee ready yet? You're always going to go where your focus is at. Like right here, I'm sitting here, arms reach, boom, got the Bible. Arms reach, got my calendar book. People call in our mentoring, hey, can we schedule a call? Yes, we can. You know, I, I got my different books right here. Um, you, you, what, what do you focus on, you get. That's why when I start every morning, I go to the prayer chair, okay? Mark 135, Jesus got up early in the morning, went to a solitary place where he prayed. When I wake up, first thing I do, I go to the prayer chair. I am focused on the Lord to start my day. You know, so many times I talk to different people, and it may be somebody in our church, somebody in our mentoring program, or just whatever, maybe in our health program, or I'm mentoring somebody in, in different things that I mentor people in, and, and they talk about a prophetic word, a vision, a dream they have, and they're so passionate about it. And I'm buying into it. I'm like, man, that's awesome. I love your prophetic word. I love your vision. I can so see you doing that. Man, it's right up your alley. It matches your gifts, talents, and abilities. What's your plan? Oh, no. And then all of a sudden, a month or two later, they're going off over here. But they're not focused, okay? When, when you're driving, we always told our kids when, when we're teaching our girls how to drive, 10 and 2, focus. Oh my gosh, look at that. What? No, no, no. You don't look. I just wanted to see if you would. I said, keep your eyes on the road. Don't be picking up. Like, uh, one time I, I text my girls, like, quit, quit reading that text. <laughs> you know, focus, focus. All right. Focus on what you're doing. That's why th this little, this little bad boy right here is good for me. And I, I'll tell you why. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I didn't even know this. I did not even realize this. The front of my my calendar for 2023-2024, it says focus on the good. <laughs> Prophetic sign from the Lord. You know, you charismatics are always looking for a sign. I got your sign right here. But I, I open this up. Okay. So today I have six calls with people in the mentoring. I'm talking to four health coaches, and I'm shooting four videos. I've got two blocks of prayer, one block of Bible, and two blocks for books, one mindset book and one spiritual book. That's what I'm focusing on. See, the night before, I write down in, in, in my calendar what I'm going to do, and so the next day I open up, and I'm just not going about my day. I've got things listed down, all right? That's what I focus on, prayer. Prayer is a big deal to me. We've been doing a Tuesday night prayer for 12 years now. For 12 years, we've been doing a Tuesday night prayer. Just even what, even seven years before Roar Church was established, me and a friend of mine, Jeff McFarlane, established a Tuesday night prayer, and we've been praying for 12 years. You know, what do you focus on? Whatever you focus on is where your attention, your efforts, your money, it goes, all right? Colossians Three and two, set your mind on things that are above, not on the things that are of the earth. So many times we get a prophetic word from God, but then we let all of these natural things pull our attention off of the God thing. 
Proverbs 4.25, let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze straight before you. What are you looking at? Like, what are you looking at? What are you focused on? Whatever you're focused on, it matters. I saw a, a video one day of a, a, a guy, he, he was in a parking lot, and it, was, it wasn't funny, but there was not a car in the whole parking lot. And he had a light pole. And some people would laugh at that. A few weeks ago, I was I was going to pick my son up for school, and he drive through this one parking lot before he get in the pickup line. And I was going, and, and no, I was just in a parking lot driving five, six miles an hour, and no one was in the parking lot. And somebody, you know, messaged me, and I picked up my phone, and I looked, and I kind of got off a little bit. There was a pole way up ahead of me. I wasn't in the straight line. Your life is in a straight line if you are focused, okay? Proverbs 4, 25, like I said, let your eyes look directly before you. Where you put your eyes, that's what your mind thinks about. That's what you're focused on. I remember um, I had a, <laughs> I was doing a kind of marriage counseling, but just the guy came in. And he came in and he was frustrated with his wife and, Rah, 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 rah. I said, I, I, hang on. What your eyes been looking at? He said, what do you mean? I said, what your eyes been looking at? He said, what do you mean? I said, I don't remember you ever being negative towards your wife. I mean, what have your eyes been looking at? And he just said, well, I looked at another family, and and, and this lady, she does this and this. And I looked at this family, and their wife does this. this. I said, they ain't your wife, and that ain't your family. You know, a lot of times we look at what this person has, this person's ministry, this person's business, this person's family. That ain't your business. That ain't your family. That ain't your ministry. I mean, it, it, it's it's really none of your business, okay? Focus, focus, okay? That's what I, I try to teach my kids. That's what I try to teach people. If you would focus on you. Had somebody one time, they were frustrated. They were frustrated, they were in our ministry, they were frustrated with our ministry. And uh, I, I told this couple, I said, hey, look, I know you're struggling financially, I know you're struggling in your marriage, I know you're struggling with your kids, in every area of your life you're struggling. Your relationship with me is the one thing you do not need to be struggling in. And I don't do drama. I mean, you're, you're frustrated with everything in your life. Why would you be frustrated with your church? And then they said, oh my gosh, thank you for bringing clarity to us. Our focus feels like it's in a blender. <laughs> and we're just frustrated with everything. They're not focused. They weren't focused, okay? You gotta be focused. Matthew 6, this is gonna help you. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Listen, listen, listen. The kingdom of God, not your kingdom, and his righteousness, not your righteousness, and not your truth. Most people think their truth is the truth. Now, the Bible says there's nobody perfect, no, not one, so nobody has the perfect truth. Our truth and our hope is found in him. And it says in all of these all of these things will be added unto you. One translation says, and all of these less important things will be taken care of. When our focus and our gaze is upon him, everything else will be taken care of. So what are you focused on? As we're getting ready to enter into 2024, can you focus for 365? One of my buddies one time, he said, Joe, you know why when we have gym memberships, we charge 12 months? I said, I bet I can, but go ahead and tell me. He said, because 80% of the people that sign up in January don't come back in February, and 10% that come back don't come back in March. In February, they'll come back in March. He said, 90% of the people don't even enter the gym from March to December. That's why gyms will go under if we did month to month contracts, we gotta do the year because people don't come back. They're not focused. They have a dream, a vision, but they don't have a long-term plan. 
whenever I do anything in my life, I get a long-term plan because if I don't, it won't work. All right? Long-term plan. Focus. What are you focused on? You focus on your relationship with God. Great. When do you read every day? When do you pray every day? Focused on your marriage? Okay, my wife and I, we have a coffee date. We talk numerous times a day. We have it set up. I try to have a meaningful relationship with uh, every one of our kids. I try to have a conversation with every one of our kids every single day. Okay? I work on our mentoring program, our health coaching program, um, the social media videos, our church. I, I'm always focused on the important things. And when you, Matthew 6, spend all your time focusing on your kingdom assignment, other things will just fall in place. How many times have you seen somebody say, oh, what is my my next uh, Netflix series I need to watch? What's my net, next Netflix series I need to watch? Okay, how's your walk with God? How's your marriage? How's your finances? How's your health? You know, when the Bible talks about the complete being that we are, it's spirit, mind, emotion. Some say spirit, soul, body. And so that would break down basically into four things. Spirit, mind, emotions, and body. How is your walk with God? How's your spirit, man? Two, how is your mindset? Three, how is your emotions? Are you emotionally stable? And four, how is your physical body? We only got we only got one body, okay? That's all we get in life, one body, okay? The Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Health is very, very important. The Bible says spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. I, I, I've had so many people say, man, I, I feel like I'm supposed to entrepreneur a business, but I work eight hours. I come home, I got three kids, and I'm just so tired. Okay? Then I know people who are 60. I know people who are 70. They work an eight-hour job, and they come home and entrepreneur multimillion-dollar businesses. I know people who got three or four big things that they do in life because they keep their health in check. I know when I work out and I come and work in the office after that, I have a more productive day than when I come in and work in the office and then work out later at night when I come home. I have a more productive work day when I work out first. Get that body, get that body going, get that blood pumping, you know, get my water in, get my amino acids in, get my protein in. You just feel better, okay? Focus is so important. Uh, a lot of people are not successful in life for the simple reason that they do not focus on what's important. I have not sat on board in over 10 years because I'm focused. I got so many things. You know the parable of the talents? You faithful with one, you get two. Faithful with three, you get six. Faithful with five. And it just keeps going. Like Dr. Miles Monroe would always say, you can have what you can manage. You've got to put yourself in a position to prosper in life, to thrive in life. Why? Because there's a whole lot of people depending on you to do what you're called to do. You know, the other day I was, I was just looking and I was thinking, how many people get a monthly check because I'm doing what I'm called to do? Think of how many people or they benefit from JoJo in the morning, from our mentoring program, our health coaching program. We have over 200 coaches in our organization. We've had over 7,000 clients. Um, as I travel and preach, as we write books, you know, we've written like 15 books. You know, everything that I'm doing, people benefit from because I died of the flesh, live in the spirit, and I'm focused. How many people would benefit in life if you would stay focused? I read a book the other day that absolutely, radically impacted my life. Yes, the Bible, but there was another book. And I was like, wow. I, I messaged that person, thanked them, sent them a seed, sent them a love offering. This book changed my life. Thank you so much. You know, your life matters and your life can make an impact if and only if you will focus on what God has called you to do. And the greatest way to do that 
is by getting in his presence every single day. All right. Y'all need prayer? Go to the website, jojodawson.net. Go to the contact button. Hit it. Send me a prayer request. I would love to pray for you. Love y'all.